Hello everyone, my name is Jared Klimas, and this is my final project for Principles of Computer Science, and this is the, called the Wrestler Live OBS Scoreboard System. Okay, so a quick overview about what this project is. This project is a designed OBS plugin that will be used in the sport of wrestling to give the user an easy way to update the score during the wrestling live stream. The reason I did this project is because I have experience in doing these wrestling live streams, and over the past, there hasn't really been a real good scoreboard solution that can be used outside of a program that is in wrestling. So I decided to have a program where we don't need to run multiple programs to update the team names or update the score names. So the team names and the, like the wrestler is all in the same program, and you have a little more a bit of a customality rather than just having different programs and making everything uh, you know, crazy. And since OBS did not offer that solution, I decided to code one up. The reason this program is good because the user can easily update scores, name, and have a functioning timer all in one program without having to worry about CPU space. Because having multiple programs to run your timer and your scoreboard and having OBS running it can clog up your CPU. And it just makes it a lot more user friendly for someone that maybe doesn't know computer well or computers well, or OBS well, or maybe has a little bit of trouble using different um, uh, programs at a time, or maybe might not be familiar with OBS. Okay, so now we're going to get to a demonstration video that I recorded that kind of shows you what the project actually does. We don't have a wrestling match to include, which the video will talk about, but let me get into that video of me explaining the project. Hello everyone, this is a live demonstration of the Russell Live OBS scoreboard system, which is an OBS plugin I designed for my computer science final project that will show you how to, you know, work the scoreboard, how to make it all happen, you know, how it all happens. I've already gone through and created an overlay display for the scoreboard itself, as you can see on top of your screen. I created that using some digital imaging software that I have. And basically, this is one I've been using with wrestling in the past, so I thought it would be good to work in. And now these uh, text functions, so you see the zeros and the period numbers, which they'll update once I actually get into the program itself. Uh, they are text in OBS that are set to read from a text file and will update based upon the value of the text file. So without further ado, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to open up my... Russell Live scoreboard system, and now you see I'm in the Russell Live scoreboard system. Now, normally on this screen there would be a wrestling match, but I don't really have access to a wrestling match at this current moment since we are in a pandemic and I'm kind of limited on stuff. So we're going to work with what the best we've got, but imagine there's a wrestling match going on. Now, at the beginning of a match, you usually have two teams. For this demonstration, I'm going to call them Team Red and Team Green. You'd put those names into these boxes here and then you would hit the update team names button and watch what happens. Your team names appear. So, sorry, I have it covering the uh, scoreboard overlay on my end. Uh, so we're going to fix that. So yeah, that's kind of how that works. But um, now normally, then you'll have a weight class. So for this demonstration, I'm going to pretend we're at 106 right now. So I'm going to put 106 into for the weight class. And then for wrestler names, I'm going to go John Doe and let's say green team wrestler is Steve Smith. Perfect. Now, I hit this update wrestler and weight class button and the text files update. Now, this is good for when you're in between matches. Now, let's say the match and well, I'll get to that part later, but. When the match ends, you can. there's a way that you can clear these out automatically. Now, for the time, we're going to actually set it to two minutes. Because in a normal high school wrestling match, the time is two minutes. So what we're going to do is we're going to go one, two. And that for the minutes. And then that zero right there will translate to a zero, zero. And then what we'll do is that we'll update the clock. So actually, we're going to hit the update clock button. And that'll update their clock to two minutes. And then the seconds... On this end, on your console end, it will say a zero, but I have it set so it will give a zero zero in the program itself. 
It's just not outputting here because tkinter is weird like that. Okay, and then for the period, you're just going to choose one. And then basically, if you update the period, it'll update. If not, you can just hit the update period button and it'll all work. All right, time to start the match. So what's going to happen is we're going to actually go ahead and start the clock. And you're going to see, when I start the clock, which there might be a bit of a second delay, but... When I start the clock, the countdown starts on the screen, It's and then it's mirrored onto the actual scoreboard itself. Now, when a wrestler scores, let's just say wrestler John Doe gets a takedown. A takedown is in two points, so I'm going to add two to his score. It might take a second to update. That's fine. It happens. And then basically what will happen is you'll basically run. If your scoreboard stops for some reason, you can just hit the restart button. Sometimes it will do that when it pauses, but you just gotta make it, it'll, you can just hit the stop button again. It does that, sometimes it depends on how fast your processor is and things like that. And then if you wanna stop the clock, you just hit the stop button and the clock will stop. Now, at the end of a, peer, at the end of a match, what you'll do is you'll put the team score in. So say he pinned him, that is a six point addition. Actually, I'm gonna actually demo this um, using the type method. So if you want to type in the spin box, you just hit, type in, let's say seven, and then you will hit the update scores button, and that'll actually update the scores to whatever you typed into the box. Okay. Now let's say the, the mount is over and it's time for the next wrestler, but you don't want to clear team names and team scores because that's a pain in the re-enter. What you're going to do is you're going to hit the reset bout button. A little warning screen will pop up. I don't know if you can see it on OBS or not, but a warning screen will pop up. And then you click OK and watch everything clears out for the team name and team score. And then what you can do is then you can re-enter another wrestler and do that type of thing. Now let's say the, bout, the match is over, it's time to reset. What you'll do is you're going to hit the reset dual meet button. When you hit this button, everything's going to get cleared out, including it'll re-delete and recreate the text files. So you might see OBS blank out for a minute because it's like, where are the text files? But it, they should come back very shortly after. Match is now reset, everything's blank, and you're ready to go for your next dual meet. I hope you all enjoyed the program, and if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I am very open to questions, especially about wrestling itself. I can answer how the program works and things like that. And yeah, thank you for watching. Hello everyone, this is, sorry about that, but that's the program in a nutshell, basically how it functions and the background behind that. Now let's actually get into diving into this, you know, how the program is actually laid out. This is not going to be in Python language, so don't worry, you don't have to worry about if you don't fully understand tkinter or Python, this will help you ex explain it in a little more of a uh, more easily to understand explanation. Let's start with our reset functions. There's the main reset function, which will reset the team names, wrestler scores, period, team names, wrestler names, basically everything to an empty string. There's also the reset all function. The functions are different because one will actually reset the files and the scoreboard uh, text files, as well as clear the entries in the text box, where the other reset function just resets everything to their default value. And then the reset bout function is basically what I showed you earlier, which where the wrestler names and scores and the clock and the period reset to the default. So now there's one background function I call, which will be called in the background. The reset functions are also considered background functions, but this is another background function. That's the update text files function. When the scoreboard updates, when the clock updates, when the weight class updates, when any of those functions update, you, all the text files have to be updated. So this function is a very important function because it is called constantly throughout the program to give that effect of the scoreboard actually changing. So that's why that part is very important and the update text files is a very important function. The way that function works is it basically opens a new text file or opens the existing text file, turns the value, what you want to change, let's say the wrestler name, of the wrestler one 
changes it to a string, make sure it's a string. It writes it to the file, overwriting what's in there right now, and then it closes the file, which will then mirror that in the OBS on the scoreboard function. Okay, the name functions. So like, like the uh, function that I showed you, this is where the name will actually be updated in the entry boxes. So the team names and the wrestler names will be typed in and then usually you'll hit either the update team name or the update wrestler name or the update weight class name, depending on what you're updating. You'll type that in, click the button, the function will get called. It'll rewrite, it'll get the value from the entry box, put it into the store in the global variable for whatever you're trying to update and then call upon the update text files function to make sure that change ends up on the scoreboard. The update score function, it works similar, except instead of entry boxes, it's spin boxes, which is basically those counter type boxes that has the up arrow and the down arrow. You can choose the score or you can type in the score depending on what you like to do. But the update team score function, the update wrestler score function work the exact same, where basically when you hit the button, the up button, it'll basically, you know, advance it by one. If you hit the down button, it'll take away from one. It depends. But basically it'll get the, it'll get the um, whatever's entered in there. Then it will basically store that in the global variable. And then it does that all. It does it when it's in the spin box and you use the arrows in the spin box, it'll do it automatically. However, if you decide, let's say you want to type the score into the spin box, you have to hit the update score button and that will actually manually call the function to get the value store in the global variable and then all and eventually update the update files function. Okay, so now here comes the fun part of this program which is the countdown clock. So to help illustrate it, because this was a fun, this is basically built on a loop. Um, to help illustrate it, I did a diagram. So the clock is gonna start, and then basically it's gonna do a, a function, a while loop function, where it's gonna check if the minutes are zero and the run is active. We'll get into more of what the run does later, but just for now, I'll, I'll explain what that does. Basically, what will happen is if the minutes are active, then it'll get to a second while loop where it'll check if the seconds are zero. If it's not, then it'll enter the loop, say seconds are deducted by one, and then it'll update the clock function, and then the program will be paused for one second. That's using the time function, which I learned quite a bit about, and it'll pause the program to give that effect as well as update the window. And then it'll loop back and say, all right, is second seconds still zero, not zero. If it's not zero, let's do it again and again and again until it's zero. Once it's zero, basically it will then go and reset the, it'll deduct the minute and then it'll reset the seconds to 59 if the sec minutes are not at zero. If the minutes are at zero and it hits zero, clock so stops. Basically that's the end of the countdown function. That means your timer is up. Now, once it resets, the clock functions up them and the program pauses and then it loops back around, go, see seconds is 59 and goes back around just like how you'd expect a timer to work. All right, so the clock entry spin boxes are the minutes and the seconds. I don't know why that's a stop clock, but the minutes and seconds, I'm actually gonna change it real quick, but the minutes and the seconds in the function will uh, when you, you that's where you're going to enter in your um, your name or not your name your length of how long you want the sec the uh, seconds and minutes to be usually that is a two minutes and zero seconds or one minute 30 or one minute depends on what you want to do I prefer using the spin box uh, arrows because it automatically updates but then if you want to update the clock once you put it in we'll get to the buttons over there but if you want to method you'll hit the update clock button and that will actually manually update to whatever you put in the spin box you typed it in some some people like to type it some people will use the spin box I like the spin box now getting to the start clock buttons and the stop clock buttons the start block sets the run to true which will now uh, allow the loop to start and then it'll call the countdown function to start the timer which will start that whole function I just showed you and then the stop clock button 
we'll set the run to false, which will terminate the loop in where it stands. So each of those loop functions have has a condition that says, if run is true, run. If it's not, it will stop. That basically will indicate the stop function. And one thing I did forget to mention with the clock as well, um, the values are updated in the spin box as it goes, as you saw, and that's done using the delete and insert function for tkinter. All right, now I'm gonna get into the reflection of the project itself. So how did the project go? Once I learned the tkinter and the made the entry boxes and the spin boxes, it was very easy to get that all coded. Now this was time consuming because I had to make sure everything was adjusted properly and there were a lot of entries to put in and make sure all the functions work properly and put this through very rigorous testing. However, I will say this, figuring out the timer was a bit difficult. I did spend quite a few hours Googling it. I talked with uh, Dr. Jensen about it. Uh, I found a solution online, which is credited in the project itself. Um, and I also talked with Dr. Jensen and we basically came up with the idea of just do it through a loop. So uh, once we got that figured out, the timer loop was easy, but just figuring out how to do it was difficult because I, I spent a lot of time figuring it, that out. And then the function, Functions to adjust the values and the variables were very interesting to code because it was not easy to figure out. Like I said, once I learned tkinter, I was able to figure it out a little more, but being able to use those functions and apply them into the actual project was very interesting and good to code, and I enjoyed doing that very much. Now, potential improvements. The easier flow for a timer. So if you noticed in the program, there is an issue with the timer where it freezes when you hit the score or um, some time. That is because of a sleep function. I'm trying to figure, there was, I didn't figure out a way to, to get rid of that. So I want to kind of do that. And then also just maybe add a little more color to it, I guess. Wrestling, I felt like the program looked good from a creativity standpoint for its purpose. Maybe along the line, you might want to maybe add a little more, um, pizzazz, I guess, or color or things like that. So that's kind of where I stand with that. And overall, I think this was a very interesting project. I'm glad I did it. Thank you all for my group members for watching this uh, project, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you do have any questions or would like to try this out on your own and would like to actually install the program and maybe run a live stream or do something like that, please let me know. I would be happy to show you how to do it. Like I said, I have the graphic for it too. So like I said, if you guys want to try it out, be my guest. I will be glad to teach you. But once again, I want to thank you all for watching. Hopefully you have a great final season. Happy holidays and stay safe everyone and well.